Hey everyone, welcome in. I'm Jess, it's Wednesday, and today I'm continuing on with my top five games of 2022. Can you believe it, folks? 2022 is almost complete. We still have a few more days left, so a few more games for me to squeeze in before the end of the year. Um, if you all are following me on social media, I did post a picture, a little teaser, if you will, of the game box, like I did for game five and four. But if you are not sure what game it is, today I'm going to be doing a game of Three Sisters. That's right, friends. But I'm going to be playing it solo, as well as incorporating the weather expansion in it. Uh, so you've seen me play this game uh, a few times here on the channel. So today I'm going to be playing a solo scenario as well as incorporating the weather expansion within it. So I hope you all will stick around for that uh, today as well as we are concluding our crisscross tournament for the month of December. Uh, yes, friends, it is time to crown another winner of our monthly tournaments. So uh, stick around for that. Um, pop in the chat the tournament sheet if you want to play some crisscross with us. We've got some fairly good scores, fairly high scores coming into this. So I hope you all will stick around and play along with me today. Hello to Tan and Tech and James and Phantom, everyone else that might be a working and lurking or enjoying your holiday right now. Uh, I appreciate you all being here today. I had kind of a interesting day yesterday around this time. Um, our power went out. We had a crazy wind and rainstorm, uh, so much so that it actually knocked the power out in our um, neighborhood. So. We were without power for about an hour, uh, which I was very thankful for that it came back super quickly. Um, but it was kind of odd. You know, I was I was just doing some emails and uploading some videos to YouTube, and all of a sudden, we just hear this zoop, and everything went dark. So, <laughs> I mean, thankfully, it was in the morning. And we, you know, had plenty of daylight outside, even though it was, you know, cloudy and rainy. Um, we, you know, just opened up the blinds and our windows and things and let the natural light shine in. But um, yeah, it was it was a little bit freaky. We had a backup generator. We were ready with it. We had external power. Um, our water was still fine. And we had plenty of uh, blankets and warm clothing to get cozy with. So yeah. Um, yeah, it was really, really interesting to experience that. I actually had to go run some errands yesterday as well. And so some of the traffic lights around our area were out. So that was an interesting experience to try to navigate because sometimes, I don't know if you all have experienced this, but sometimes when people are driving and either the power goes out or street lights go out, some folks know what to do when it comes to like, uh, convening at intersections and some other folks don't know what to do at intersections. So <laughs> it was a little bit chaotic to try to let people know like, okay, this is like a four-way stop sign. So two folks that are going this direction can now go together. And then these folks that are going this direction can now go together. Um, but yeah, it was I felt like there needed to be some sort of like traffic attendant in the middle, like, you know, directing people <laughs> and like, okay, now you go, you go over here and you cross over here and, oh man. Um, but yes, like I said, everything, everything came back on uh, after an hour or so. Um, my, my in-laws had their power be out for like most of the day, which was kind of a bummer because we were planning on doing a um, family get to get together and their power shut on, like turned back on, like right as we were like pulling up into their driveway. <laughs> so it was, it was a, it was an interesting day yesterday. I'm glad I wasn't streaming because uh, I would have probably had to cancel the stream because I had no idea when the um, power would have came back on. 
But um, yeah, so that was that was quite the day. We've had some snow. We've had some freezing rain here in Oregon. Uh, lots and lots of crazy weather happening. Um, thank you, James, for the lurk. Uh, enjoy playing paperback. Um, there's also been, yeah, just like some really odd holiday weather for us. So I'm glad to be here and joining you all today for a game of Three Sisters. Uh, stay tuned on Friday. I will be playing my number two game, uh, hopefully with some folks that you are familiar with that I've streamed with before. And then on Saturday for the Tabletop Live Network, we are counting down uh, to 2023. And on Saturday, uh, the streamers are going to be playing their top games of 2022, or at least their favorite, one of their favorites of 2022. And then on Sunday, they're going to be playing their uh, one of their games from their shelf of opportunity. We're not playing. We're not calling it shelf of shame. We're going to call it the shelf of opportunity, uh, so folks can uh, experience what games have been sitting on their shelf collecting dust for the past year. Or maybe longer than that, because I know uh, Gus and I have quite a few titles on our shelf of opportunity that are just collecting dust right now and hoping to uh, get to the table sometime soon. But my stream is going to be on Saturday at noon 30 Pacific time. If you are looking for the full schedule, there is the website for our Tabletop Live Network. You can see who is going to be streaming with us. Um, this weekend, but it's going to be super, super fun. I cannot believe 2023 is already here. Uh, I'm kind of ready for it, but I'm also kind of not. Um, there are a lot of ups and downs, a lot of a lot of um, crazy times that happened this year, and I'm sure a lot of crazy things have happened for a lot of us. So maybe a new year is a good time to do a restart, a recharge. Um, or just continue on with what you're doing, you know? Maybe maybe it's just another day. I know some folks don't like celebrating certain holidays or certain times of the year. Um, it's just a little too much and that is completely understandable. You're safe, you're welcome here. And I appreciate you all just hanging out with me today. However you wanna celebrate this Wednesday, if you're not celebrating Wednesday, if it's just another day to you, then welcome in uh, uh, regardless, so. All right, we're going to be doing some Three Sisters Friends, uh, Three Sisters solo mode. So in this game, friends, you are actually gardening and there's a garden technique that that is known as companion planting where certain uh, crops are grown at certain proximity to other crops so that they help with, with them in their growing process. Um, it has been specifically done in the Northwest for the indigenous peoples. And so this game is kind of an adaptation of that technique. However, in the solo mode, we are going to be competing against farmer Edith here. She's, uh, she's an interesting character. She's going to try to foil your plans when it comes to plan, uh, planting things, growing things, uh, taking care of things inside your shed and whatnot. So we are going to be playing this over the course of eight rounds, friends. And in a multiplayer round, multiplayer game, you're going to be rolling dice depending on the player count um, plus two. So essentially for a solo game, we're going to be playing set up for a two player game, which is uh, one die per player plus two. So we have four dice that we're going to be working with. And what happens is we're going to roll our dice. We're going to plant, we're going to place them around this rondelle. And then there's going to be drafting depending on who is the start player. So I'm going to be the start player, hence the pumpkin. And then Edith is going to be the start player on the even numbered rounds. So what's going to happen friends is I'm going to roll these dice place them around our rondelle, and I'll explain what everything does in just a second. So I'm gonna do this, show you all what we've got. Every time you see a pumpkin on a die, that is considered a value of one. So we're going to start here with Farmer Edith, and then we're going to group the dice together based upon the number value that they are 
in ascending order. So because we had two dice of value of two, they're going to be placed on the same spot. Now each of us is going to take a turn uh, recruiting, uh, drafting a die and using that die value for two things. One, we are going to look at the number on the die itself and take the plant and or water, the plant or water action. What that means is you will look at our garden plots here and they are numbered one through six. So whatever number is on the die, that is the garden plot that you're going to plant or water in for that round, okay? <clears throat> so for example, if I took the number two here, I would plant or water in garden plot number two. If I decided to plant, that means I would take two of my crops and fill in the lowest most space of two crops in that garden plot section. So for number two, I, would, I could fill in two separate crops. If I wanted to water instead, I would fill in the next available empty box on any of my crops in that plot number that have already been planted. So if I had an X here on the bottom of my corn and an X over here on the corn, I could water both of these plants for one action by filling in the next available spot there. Now, as you see next to some of the corn, friends, there are these smaller crops. Those are the beans. In order for you to plant beans in a plot section, you need to have at least two corn of the adjacent crop next to it filled in before you can fill in the bottom most box of a bean crop. So for this example here, I would need to fill in the bottom two of this corn before I can fill in the one box of this bean. Uh, same thing applies here for the pumpkin. Some of the pumpkins have multiple spots before you can reach the top of a pumpkin crop. So you have to start at the bottom. There is no restriction in terms of like having a certain number of other crops before you can, before you can do the pumpkin. The only restriction is that you have to start at the bottom of a pumpkin crop and work your way towards the top. Okay, so that is a plant or water action. So when you draft a die, you're going to do the plant or water action of that die number, and then you're going to look at the rondelle and determine what that, what that action is of the rondelle. So here, again, it is a plant or water. So a second time, you're going to plant or water in the area of the die that you drafted from, okay? So again, I would plant or water in spot number two. So those are the two steps of your primary action when you draft a die. You have the, the um, gardening phase, which is considered of the plant or water action of the die, and then whatever the action space is indicated on the rondelle itself. Once everybody has done that and has drafted their first die, remaining, there usually is a multiplayer game, there's usually a die remaining that all the players will simultaneously use as their next action for that round. However, in a two-player game for the solo mode, Farmer Edith is going to draft uh, a die of her choice and whatever draft number she is going to uh, take, she is going to eliminate some spots on your player sheet that you cannot do any actions on, okay? Uh, Slur says, hi, 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 Jess and chat. I see no sisters on stream, just you, what gives? <laughs> Hi, 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 Slivers, good to see you. Uh, well, I have my sister Ahsoka over here, and next to her is my sister Sally. There you go. So there's my three sisters. <laughs> uh, okay, so what's going to happen is she is going to try to sabotage any of our uh, gardening um, actions here. So she will take a number die and when she does that she is going to depending on what number it is is going to try to eliminate certain areas of our garden plot and i will explain what those do as we go on through the game uh, when it is the uh she will always take the die that is closest to her player pawn 
If there is no die here next to her player pawn, she will take the ne next die in clockwise order. Okay. Um, then whoever is the first player will draft their second dice, and the second dice must be of a lower value of whatever is remaining on the board. So if I took this two, and let's say Edith took the five, what was remaining is a one and a two, I would have to take this one per the rules, says that you have to take the lower number dice there. Um, then there are the rondelle phases. The rondelle phases de are dependent upon where the dice are that she actually takes. And I will explain what each section does as we go through it and as we play those certain areas. I will read exactly what the rules tell you. So she is going to try to sabotage our point scoring for sure. Once we do our drafting all of our dice and we, we do our planting and anything here on our shed actions, we will take a round action, which is an event. So because we're playing over eight rounds, we're going to have eight events. This event says we're going to do a shed action. Shed time means I can take one of the empty spaces here on the shed area and fill in the leftmost empty space of that shed. Once we reach a circle space on a shed or a circle space on uh, any of our garden plots or here in our apiary or a fruit orchard, we will gain bonus actions either in terms of goods or in terms of victory points that will score at the end of the game. Now goods are goods are considered um, usable for when you can collect up to bonus actions. If you gain five goods, every sequence of five goods that you collect, you will be able to gain a bonus action, which is a star space here. The star spaces allow you to take one additional action in your um, in your either your garden. It, in any of their plots over here, but not in your garden. I'm just gonna double check that because I believe that is the case. Do, 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 do. I just don't, don't wanna misspeak here when you take a bonus. Uh, you gain a bonus action. Yes, they cannot be spent in the garden. So when you take a star, it has to be on this side of your player sheets here okay so you will fill in the next available empty space there uh, there's a compost track as well compost allow you to manipulate the die value just for yourself either a value of up one pip or down one pip and you can combine as many compost as you have available to manipulate the die more than one pip if you choose to so that's what the compost does there uh, then we've got so we've got our we've got our effects here. We've got rain. We've got farmers market. Farmers market also co corresponds to goods. You will count the number of goods you have collected, and wherever range you are, the closest to so the closest value here. If I had five goods, I would actually be at this value of four goods, which would give me a perennial and one compost. Now when you are filling in your garden areas. You will see in between some of these plant, uh, pumpkin areas, there are perennials. When you have completed the two adjacent pumpkins next to a perennial, you will fill in that perennial spot and you will fill in the bottom spot of the perennial that it notes here. So for example, this is a hyacinth. So when you filled in this, all of this pumpkin crop and all of this pumpkin crop, you will get a hyacinth and you will go to the hyacinth, fill in the bottom space, and that will immediately give you two goods. You will fill in two goods on your track there. Uh, for those perennials, the higher up you go, uh, the more things that you are able to collect as you go along your perennial track, and I'll explain what they are in just a moment. Hello, Duchess and Raiders! Welcome in! Uh, I will pop up here just to the top so you all can see my face a little bit larger. 
Uh, welcome in, Raiders. Hello to you. My name's Jess. I am a board game Twitch streamer here. I stream three days a week uh, right here on this channel, usually playing tabletop games and uh, games that you all can participate in the chat here. Today, I am going through my uh, one of my top five games of 2022. So here we go. We are playing Three Sisters. I am doing the solo mode today, as well as incorporating the weather expansion. However, after I play this game, I will be playing a tournament game of Crisscross. It is our tournament game for the month of December. And whoever wins at the end of the tournament today, you will receive a bag of swag from me and the CCG crew. So hang out for that. And welcome in Dutch. And Duchess says, I love that hat, Jess. It looks so cozy. Yes, it is. It is very cozy. Tis the season, right, to be cozy. Uh, I like to thank my mom for, for knitting this for me, or crocheting it, actually. But uh, yeah, Duchess, how was your stream? What's going on? Hello, Time Roller. Welcome in. Dutch Yoda, if I didn't say hi, hello to you again, and thank you, Duchess, for the raid. I appreciate it so, so much. I'm just going through, friends, the last couple rules here for the solo mode, because it's a little bit different, a little bit sabotage -y for Farmer Edith trying to sabotage your gardening. So here we are. Uh, stream was good, just hanging out. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. This game is good, Duchess. You know, you know what it is. So, uh, so you're in account here and the fruit area is this fruit. So you're going to mark off your fruit and then certain, certain numbers along your fruit track will give you these blue ribbons, which are, which are victory points at the end of the game. We don't like Edith. I know Dutch, but we're going to try to see if we can out garden her today and hopefully she won't sabotage us too much. We shall see. I'm going to need some extra luck from you all uh, here in the uh, chat. So I, I'm looking to all of you. I'm looking to all of you. Not to say that, you know, I'll blame you if I do poorly, because most likely I will ply. I will, I will, I will play uh, not super well, but that's just the way I do on this game. Uh, sometimes it, it helps to have a lot of uh, strategy, but then actually the execution of the strategy uh, doesn't always work out. <laughs> uh, so then, uh, so yes, yeah, so we'll go around. Uh, once we place out all of our dice, Farmer Edith is actually going to move to the next available space, so she will be ready for the next round there. Uh, but here we're just using this for an example, so I will re-roll the dice and we'll go on from there. We'll play over the eight rounds. Now, with the weather expansion, usually this changes on the end of each round, so this is going to change, and depending on what number die gets is, is um, determined, will determine what weather we're going to experience for that future round. Now, in the solo mode, what's going to happen is it's going to be determined based on the last die that was selected. So the first player, we're each going to, you know, draft a, a die one at a time. So when the first player drafts their second die, whatever value that is, that's where we're going to move the cloud to. And I will read what all of these do um, when we get to them. So I know they're kind of small to read, but they are more clear in the rule book for that. But that is basically about it. I will use this red pen to indicate all the sabotaging that Edith is going to do. And then I will use this ballpoint pen to kind of fill in what I'm going to do for my actions. But yes, if anyone has any questions, I've got the rule book right here. I'm not afraid to use it. So please, please, please ask your questions. Ask away, everyone. And uh, wish me good luck because in this game, I feel like I'm going to need it from Edith. So, all right. So we've got a two. So a two is going to go here. We've got a couple of fours here and a six. Okay, now I know we've got, <laughs> Edith started it, yeah. <laughs> now I know I'm trying to also, originally when I play this in multiplayer game, I'm usually just focusing on what my garden plots are. But now with the solo mode, I definitely have to look at what Farmer Edith is doing because she could sabotage some of my future plans. So when she does that, um, 
So I will show you what's going to happen here, depending on what she chooses. So for the rondelle actions, we've got an apiary or a fruit. So if we were to have Farmer Edith choose this, what's going to happen is she would choose one of the two sections, either apiary or fruit, and cross off one empty box in that section. The section that she chooses is based upon which section is marked with a blue push pin on the action space. So in this example, it would be the apiary. So she would cross off one of the apiary boxes, okay? The empty box that she chooses is based upon the value of the die. So because it is a value of two, she would cross off one of the topmost honey spaces. So up here, she would cross off this top honey space, which is a value of eight, which is like, holy smokes, that's, that's terrible. However, when I've played this game, I have never been able to reach honey out to the very top. So this to me kind of seems like, meh, it's not too terrible. She can take that, it's fine, okay? So my thoughts are like, yeah, maybe I'll leave the two for her. Maybe that'll be fine, okay? Uh, the four, when she does a plant or water action, she will cross off one crop in the garden zone indicated by the value of the die. Okay, so she is going to cross off one of the crops in, oh, in garden plot four. The entire crop, not just a box, the entire crop, okay? This rondelle action is in addition to her garden action for that die, yeah. So when she does that, whoever it is, she'll do that. So it's, so Farmer Edith will cross off one garden crop in the zone indicated by the value of the die. It is based on priority system though. So priority will go pumpkins first, then corn, then beans, okay? However, she will never cross off a crop that you've already planted. So as long as I have at least one X in a box, she won't touch that crop. So for the four, she would actually go through and cross off one of these top pumpkins because it's top priority because those are, those are buku bucks for us for the end of the game. Uh, so that's what she would do for that one. So that's not super great. Then here on six for the shed time, what's gonna happen as the rondelle action, which is here on the board, for shed time, it says she will cross off one shed item. The shed item she chooses is based on the icon of the shed, either the shears or the mower. And here there are garden shears and here is the mower. So she's gonna go based on the garden shears of the action space and the value of that die. She never crosses off a shed item or one that she has already crossed off. She is, will pass on that one instead. So shed time, whatever the number six is, it is a casserole dish. So she will cross off the casserole dish for me. The entire, the entire, um, the entire item, not just a box. She will do the entire item. And welcome in Deadpan. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm playing some solo mode of uh, Three Sisters. I just started, so I'm going through and letting you all know what's happening. And I did not forget about the weather, friends. They tell you for round one, you have foggy weather, which means no effect is going to happen this round, okay? So that's not super terrible uh, either. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna take a four, okay? I'm gonna take a four. So for myself, I will plant or water in plot number four. I have no crops yet, so I must plant in four, okay? So I'm gonna start just here on the bottom. I'm gonna just fill in the bottom here. Plant on two separate crops. And automatically that gives me one good Okay, so I filled in here, filled in here for my two, all right. 
And then for my rondelle action, I can plant or water again. That is also indicated on the die value that you have there. So I will do another one in four. So again, I will do here on this other pumpkin crop and here, oh wait, no, I will do here, here. Okay, so there we go. So that's my first die. Now the second die has for Farmer Edith, what it definitely says is it has to be the one where her pawn is on the apiary or fruit space. She always takes the apiary or fruit space. Or the one that is uh, the closest available die to that space in clockwise order. So right now she has one on apiary or fruit. So she's going to take this two here. Okay. When she does her gardening, she's going to cross off the top crop by chosen by the value of the garden zone by the value of the dice. So, oh, first, but first, sorry, let's do, yes, yes. So she's going to do that garden phase first. Okay. So she's going to cross off the topmost action the topmost crop in garden plot two, which for in, in this one will be the pumpkins. And it has to go tallest crop to shortest crop of pumpkins. But since there's only one pumpkin in here, we're crossing off this whole mamma jamma. So no more pumpkins in crop uh, plot number two. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Now the rondelle phase, again, is the apiary or fruit. So we're looking at apiary or fruit. And based upon the push pin, it says it's going to be the apiary. The apiary, again, like we said, is a number two. So she is going to take the topmost honey spot. And it's only an empty box. She's not going to take the whole area. It's only the empty box. She, she, she's going to cross off the empty box for that one. Okay. Now it says as the first player, when they take their second die, they must choose the lowest remaining die value, leaving the other player the lone remaining die. So I must take this one. So again, I've got another four. I'm going to water this time though, friends. Because I have three crops here, so I'm going to water. And water over here. And water over here. Okay, so that is my dye action. And then on the rondelle action, again, I do a plant or water. So I am going to plant, because now I can plant these beans over here. And these beans over here, because I have at least two corn crops. There. All right. Now, Farmer Edith is going to take this last one. So Farmer Edith is going to cross off one crop in the garden zone indicated, which is crop, which is zone number six. She is going to go from priority, which is pumpkins, then corn, then beans. So right now we've got two pumpkin crops. However, you go from the tallest pumpkin crop to the shortest. So she's going to take out these pumpkin crops here. Boo to the urns. Boo to the urns. Okay. So that is her die action. Then when she does her uh, rondelle action, which is shed time, we're looking at shed time. She's going to cross off the casserole dish. 
So goodbye to the casserole dish. No longer available. All right. No longer available. So there we go. Okay. Then we look at our events uh, for the round. Farmer Edith does not do an event this round or any round, I should say. She does not do that. Goodbye, casseroles. Yes, Sir Bears with what it do, baby boo. Uh, so I have a shed time, so I will fill in a shed time. Uh, I like getting some pump. Oh, however, my pumpkin chain is not going to be very long. So I'm not sure if I want to do the pumpkins. Um, one point per harvest. Let's see. Hmm. I will do take a perennial instead of a rondelle action for my mulch. I think I'm going to do that. That seems like a good thing here. Okay, so now we are completed round. We're going to go into round two, but first we got to look at our weather. The weather, remember, for the weather, it says for a solo mode, move the weather marker to the space that matches the last selected die. So as first player, I selected that four. So the four goes here and it says it's cloudy. At the start of the round, take one perennial action, which is awesome. Perennial actions mean you're going to look at one of the perennials here and fill in the bottom most space of that perennial. So that is pretty, pretty cool. I think, let's see. So which ones have been sabotaged? She has not sabotaged any of them yet. So that's a good thing for me. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in. Uh, okay, I'm getting close to a crocus. Crocus is nice. Uh, we've got some daffodils, possibly. Compost and apple. Tulip for peach harvest. Ooh. Okay, so I know the tulips, I won't be able to do anything there. So I will start on the tulips here. And filling in this bottom one, I am able to do a fruit action for free. So I will fill in one of these blackberries for free because of my perennial. And that gives me two points at the end of the game. So there we go. So that was our weather. Now we're in round two, so we've got some rain. And we're gonna roll them up here. But Farmer Edith, oh, I forgot to move her. So she was actually here. Because we're whenever we place the die, we always move her to the next available empty space to start the next round. I forgot to do that. All right, so what do we got here, everybody? Ooh, we got some widespread numbers, I see. Okay, so we've got a one on Edith, two here, four here, and a five here. All right, she's gonna be first, first player. So she always chooses the apiary fruit space with the golden pushpin. Okay, there's no gold pushpin here. Otherwise, she will choose the next available die in a clockwise direction from there. So she's going to go clockwise here. That means she chooses this one as her first as her first die. Okay, so for the garden action, she's going to cross off a crop in section one priorities are because of pumpkins so she's gonna sabotage my pumpkin crop dang it so goodbye to this tallest pumpkin crop in garden plot one then for the rondelle the compost and four goods for the compost and four goods Farmer Edith will cross off the next available bonus action space on the goods track. You must skip this space entirely when you reach it on the goods track. So she just sabotaged me getting any bonus actions for that. Thank you, Farmer Edith. 
Ugh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So again, we've got an apiary or fruit here. She's gonna sabotage apiary if we're gonna do that. That's totally okay. This one is a shed time. Again, uh, this one actually is going to be the trimmer. So the string trimmer which just gives you bonus points. Um, that's fine. And then this one here for the farmer's market. Farmer's market means she will cross off the topmost empty box of one of the perennials based upon the die value. So she will cross off a top crocus. So six bonus points. Ugh. That's not cool. That's not cool, Farmer Edith. That is not cool. Okay. Okay. All right. So you know what I'm going to do, though? I'm going to take this four because I'm playing, I'm playing this. I'm playing the game here. I'm playing the game. If I take this four, right? I have to plant or water in four. I'm going to water because I have all these crops to water. So I've got one here, two here, three here, four here, and five. Now I have finished this pumpkin so I get three goods however I don't get a bonus I don't get any bonus actions because I have not reached five goods yet farmer Edith has still sabotaged that spot for me but I do get this crocus because I have filled in completely both pumpkin crops adjacent to this perennial crocus so I will fill in the crocus and that will give me two composts. So I will do a little dot here and a little dot here to indicate I have those available to me. So that was my water action. And then because it's a shed time, I could do whatever I want in the shed. Uh, I like doing, oh, peach harvest. What do I want to do? This is so, this is such a difficult thing. Plus one at the farmer's market. Ooh, or a fruit bowl. I'm going to go for this one, the fruit bowl. See if I can get all different fruit if I can. Okay. Okay. Now it says for the second die, they must choose the lowest remaining. So Farmer Edith is going to choose this one and the two. Hello, Wim. Welcome in. So again, number two, garden plot. She's going to do the sabotaging of the pumpkins. There's no pumpkins remaining because she already sabotaged the pumpkins. So she's going to sabotage the next available, which is corn. Corn of my choice because they're all the same height. So I'm just going to go next to it and just go like this. No more corn. No more corn on that one, boo. Then she's gonna do the apiary or fruit. Okay, Farmer Edith turns, she does based upon where the blue push pin is on the action space. So the blue push pin is now on fruit, okay? Fruit, now it says, Whatever the number die value is, she will cross off the empty box she chooses based on the value of the die. Okay. So on the fruit, if it is a value of two, she will cross off the rightmost apple space. Rightmost apple space. Yep. There we go. Yes, this is mean. I don't know if you've done solo mode, Wim, of Three Sisters, but it is brutal. Brutal. All right, I'm moving her over here. So that means I get the five. So I fill in garden plots on five, planting or watering. I don't have any plants yet in garden plot five. So I will start a couple plants here. Okay. Then it is a farmer's market. So I will count the number of goods I have 
look at the farmer's market uh, allocation. So I have four goods checked off. My allocation here on four is one perennial plus one compost. So I'm gonna do one perennial here on my crocus and plus one compost. So I'm gonna do here and here. Okay, now we're going to make it rain. Raining means every plot that has, I uh, hope your Marys have been happy. Yes, they have. Uh, every plot that has um, plants in them will get watered. But it is only for, it is only for plants that have, uh, um, garden plots that have plant been planted, I believe. Do, 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 do. Let me just double check. The event phase. Take a water action in all of your zones. Yes. So you're watering all of your current plot uh, plants that you have planted. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So there we go. So there's nothing in here, nothing in here, but I'm going to make it rain here and here and here and here. So I got another good, but I got to skip that one, fill it in over here. And so I completed those. Those are already completed. Now I get a hydrangea for free because I got the two adjacent pumpkins. And the hydrangea allows me to fill in the next apple space. So here we go. Now we're doing the weather. The next, the so the last selected die is where the weather is determined. So that's going to be on two. So two is over here. It says lightning may not use the water action this round. Okay, so whenever we see plant or watering, or when we draft our die, we can only plant crops. We cannot water them. And that is round two, friends. Woo, Farmer Edith. Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. Whoa, holy ones, Batman. We got all these ones here. <sighs> okay. So it's to me. So I've got a one, a one, a one, or a four. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't have anything in one. I don't have anything in one, and I feel like I should get some stuff going. Although, I can't do anything with these pumpkins. These pumpkins are going to be the bane of my existence because she has eliminated so many of my pumpkin crops. Not cool, Edith. Not cool. Okay. Um... But because there's so many ones, she's gonna sabotage plot one anyway. And she's gonna, so she's gonna do two one actions. She's gonna do two one actions because she's gonna take, she's gonna take the lowest die values. Well, no, I have to take the lowest die value. So if I don't take the four, no, she has to. She's going to two ones. Okay, so I'll get a one and a four. So it doesn't matter because she has to take she has to take the one on the golden push pin. And then for me, I have to take the next lowest value. So, all right, I'll make sure I'll secure it first. I'll secure it first and take a four. And remember, I can't water, so I have to plant. have to plant okay and then it is a plant or water again
well, I can't water anything in four. So I'm going to use one of my, I'm going to use one of my composts. Turn it into a five so I can plant in five. And there. For my rondelle action. Okay. Now, Edith is going to do one. Remember, she's going to cross off one top garden plot. So she's going to do another pumpkin and one. Boo, Edith, boo. Then in the apiary or fruit, she's going to choose one of the sections based upon where the blue push pin is. So it's apiary. Apiary, she's going to do the topmost honey again. Ugh. Sorry, bees. Maybe she's allergic to bees. Maybe that's why she doesn't, she's not doing anything with the bees. Maybe she's just like, nope. No thanks. No thanks. Okay, so back to me. And because it's solo mode, the second die I have to choose is the lowest remaining value. So I have to do a one which means I'm planting in one because I can't water. So I'm going to just plant. Uh, plant, plant, plant. And then apiary or fruit. I'm going to do fruit because I'm going for my fruit bowl. All right, and then again, here she goes, taking the crops out. So this crop is safe, this crop is safe. Oh, but this is another pumpkin though. So this pumpkin goes bye-bye. Oh, I should have done that on the last one. Whoops, because that was the next tallest pumpkin. Whoops, okay. Uh, then apiary or fruit, it was a one again. So she's gonna do this here. Ugh, honey. Honey, honey, honey. All right, so then that she moves here. We're gonna do farmer's market. Farmer's market, I have five goods. So the next available tier is at 20. I'm not there yet. So I gotta do one perennial and one compost. So perennial, I'll do some shed time over here with the daffodil. Shed time, getting closer to my fruit bowl. Yeah. Okay, and the last available selected die was a one. So we go back here, which means nothing happens. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. All right, then we're going over here to round four. Edith. Nothing happens on the weather track. And we're rolling them up. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. All right, so we always start where Edith is and we go clockwise. Man, it seems like every time we roll for Edith, she always has diverse numbers. But for me, it's always multiples. Mm. Okay. So she always grabs the die from here. However, there's no die here, so she goes in clockwise rotation. So she's going to start with number one. Surprise, surprise. So we have no more pumpkins there. So she has to eliminate some corn, but this corn is safe, this corn is safe, this corn is not. Goodbye, corn. And then she's on shed time. So we look, it's the shears. The shears, it says she chooses the icon of the action space and the value of the die. She crosses off a shed item. Um, if you have already, she crosses off a shed item based on the icon number on the die. So the mason jars go bye bye. Bye bye, mason jars. Bye bye. Ugh, gross, Edith. Come on now. Okay. Okay.
Okay, I think I'm gonna do a six. However, I'm gonna use my compost and go on five. I'm feeling like one, two, and six are just kind of like whatevers. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of focus on three, four, and five. I think that's my strategy. Don't know if it's gonna work out, but that's what I'm choosing today. That's what I'm gonna choose today. So I'm gonna do six. Plant or garden in six. However, I'm gonna use my compost to plant in five or water in five, actually. Um, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna plant in five because we've got rain coming. I'm gonna plant in five instead. Okay, so then I do a shed time. And I'm going to do this. So I got my fruit bowl. My fruit bowl. There we go. I have to see I'm uh, counting the fruit bowl. You have harvested. Okay. Harvested is when I reach the circles. Okay. When I reach a circle spot, that's the harvest. So here for the different fruits, I have to harvest them. Hi, Spitzka. I love this game and hate my internet. Oh, no. Let's send some good vibes to Spitzka, everybody. Good vibes for you, Spitzka. Good vibes for you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for hanging out. Okay. Now Edith has to do the, less, the least, uh, the lowest number. So she's going to do two. Sabotage in two. Are there any more pumpkins? No, there are no more pumpkins. So she's going to sabotage some more corn. There we go. And then she's doing compost and four goods. Of next available bonus spot. <sighs> Dag nabbit, Edith. Come on now. Dag nabbit. My internet is causing this to be so out of focus. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Okay, so that was this gross. Edith, come on now. <sighs> okay, so I get a four. I plant or water in four. I'm gonna plant in, f oh no. No, I'm gonna water in four. I'm gonna water in four. Okay, and then that was apiary or fruit, so I'm going to do my raspberries, and that gives me three goods. Dag nabbit, though, I can't do a bonus action, because Edith, erg. Dag nabbit, dag nabbit, all right, but I make it rain, so we're going to rain, everybody. Rain. Nothing in two, nothing in three, four. I'm going to make it rain over here. Five. I got a lot of rain. Oh, yes. Lots of rain here. This is beautiful. This is something beautiful. Gonna make it rain on these beautiful plants. Okay. The last drafted die was a two. Which means we're going here. Cannot use water this round. Great, Edith. Thank you. Ugh. Okay, so we're going here. It's me. So what have we learned here today, friends? Edith does not like bees. And she does not like pumpkins. Wow, one, two, three, four. That's a first. Okay, so one's gonna go here on Edith. We've got two, three, 
and four there. Okay. Okay, but it's my turn down here. Ooh, I could do three and I could do some double planting and watering. Edith is such a, you know what? Yeah, a pain, a pain in my toot toot. All right, uh, here we go. I'm gonna do a three because I like the double planting and watering here. So I'm gonna plant some stuff. I'm gonna plant. For my dice action and then for my rondelle action i'm going to water so i'm going to water these beautiful pumpkins and then that gives me a free good uh that would have given me another good so i could have done a bonus action edith darn you all right but now it's her turn she always takes the die from the AP or fruit, fruit space with the golden push bin if it's available. Well, it is. So she's going to take this one. Okay. And so that's a two there. So she's going to sabotage into, oh, what if she can't? Um, if you have already planted all crops in the entire zone, she passes. Oh, it's number two, not number one. Number two. My bad. She is going to sabotage these corn. Ugh, gross. Gross, Edith. Come on now. All right, and then she's going to do apiary or fruit. So it is the section on the blue push pin. So she's going to do apiary, and it's a two again. Honey. No more honey for the bees. Whew, she eliminated those bees very quickly. Very, very quickly. Maybe she has an allergy. Maybe that's what it is. She just, she can't, she can't deal with the bees. Okay, so then next I have to, I have to choose the next lowest available, which is the one here. All right, so I'm going to move her over here. All right, so one. So I'm going to plant or water in one. Um, I'm going to water. No, I'm going to pl plant because I have my beans. I could do two beans here. Plant and plant. And that was here on the farmer's market. So I count my goods. Nine. I don't have 20 yet. So another perennial and a compost. Save myself a compost here and a perennial which will give me plus two goodies for every peach harvest that's nice hello beluga bliss welcome in joe uh three sisters looks like fun yes i am playing the solo mode where we've got farmer edith trying to sabotage your gardening she's doing a pretty good job i think uh highly recommend checking this out it's very crunchy it's very strategic uh, but I enjoy it a lot, hence being in my top five of 2022. Okay, so I did the farmer's market. All right, and now she gets four, so she's going to sabotage in four. Uh, so she's going to do... She's going to do beans, because that's the only thing that's available over here. She's going to do some beans in four. All right, then she's got her shed time. Shed time. Um, she's going to do the four, which is the fruit bowl. <gasps> if you've already completed the chosen shed item, she passes. Yeah! Woohoo! Oh, that's so great. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> Cool. Uh, how did the Kickstarter go, Joe? It went really well. Thanks for asking. A lot of kind support. Awesome. So if you all were uh, watching uh, last week, a couple weeks ago, we played uh, Snow People on Kickstarter. It is a, a new print and play 
coming out from the folks at Twin City Games in conjunction with Joe over at Beluga Bliss Games. And uh, I played it online here, and it was a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun. If anyone, I don't know if anyone is available to, if you want to read more about it, I will pop the information into the chat. Because I don't know, I don't know if you're, are you taking any late pledges? Oh, sorry, Joe, Phantom. I was talking to uh, Joe of Beluga Bliss. Yeah, sorry, Phantom. <laughs> Too many Joes in the chat. Too many Joes in the chat. Uh, but there you go. So yeah, I don't know if y'all are taking late pledges or not, but um, yeah. Silly, same names, yeah. All right, so now we're doing the event, which is the farmer's market. So again, get a perennial and a compost. Uh, I'm gonna give myself some hyacinth for some couple of goodies here. See if I can get myself a bonus action. And there we go. All right, so now we're going to be in round six. The last drafted die for me was a three. So this goes here. May not use the apiary this round, says the weather. I think you can reach out to Cody at Twin City. Okay, cool. Well, there's the link if anybody's interested in um, seeing if they want to back snow people. I'm glad it went well, though. Very, very happy. Okay, we're in round six, everyone. Round six. Whoa! That just came right out. Okay, uh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna leave it as a two. We're gonna leave it as a two. Oh, we got some large numbers, though. We got some five and a couple sixes. Okay, so Edith always plans this one first, and then she goes in a clockwise rotation. So she's on plot number two. Ugh, sabotaging, sabotaging everything. And then compost or four goods. Are you kidding me? Ah, all of my bonus spaces are getting foiled here. Edith, Rrr, rage. I feel rage, everybody. Oh, man. Not cool, Edith. Not cool. Okay. Uh, Okie dokie. So I'm going to take a fiver. Fiver. So I'm going to do some planting, get my beans growing here. then an apiary or a fruit action. My apiary, I'm just going to leave it to its own devices. So I'm going to do this for my peaches, which gives me two goods. Ah, dang it, dang it, dang it. But then I get to water. So I get to water one plot. I'm going to water over here. I think that's, yeah, for the peaches, I think you can do... Mm -mm -mm -mm. A zone of your choice. Yeah, so that's what I did. Okay. Ugh, Edith. All right, so now she's going to do a six. So she's going to sabotage in six. Sabotage my other pumpkins. Gross. And then she's doing a shed time. Shed time with the mower. 
Shed time with the mower is number six, which is a mulch. Where's the mulch? Oh, I already filled it in. <laughs> she has to pass. Sorry, Edith. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, so then I'm also going to do six. But I'm going to pass and do, I'm going to actually use my compost and do a fiver and do a water action instead. So I'm gonna water all of these beautiful crops. All of these beautiful crops. All right, then that was mine here. And we're gonna do the shed action. So I get to do whatever I want for the shed. Do do do. Ooh, I could spend three compost for a bonus action. Oh, or ooh 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 ooh. Shoot. Or I mean, we're getting close to it. There's only two more rounds. What can I get? What can I get for some points? What can I get for some points? Points, 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 points. I like doing bonus actions though, so I'm gonna do this one. Okay. Okay. And the last drafted selected die was a six, so now we're moving the uh, weather to six. When planting, one of the seeds must be planted in an adjacent field. Okay. Interesting. All right, back to me now. Oh, goodness gracious. Ah! Okay. Okay, two here for Edith. We got three, four, and four. Five. Hmm. When you're planting, it must be in an adjacent. Okay. Boop 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 Ba, ba, da, ba. Okay. I'll do that. Okay, so I'll take the five and I'll plant. I have to plant one in five and then one adjacent. So I'll do one over here. And then doing the shed time. I'll do it over here like this. Okay, shed time. Getting this here. I could spend three compost for a bonus action. Yes, I will, finally. So I could do things over here now. And I'm gonna do this down here so I can get some more goods. So I can be closer to getting another bonus action. Yes. Okay. Now, Farmer Edith has to take the one from the apiary and fruit section. So she's going to garden plot in three. So she's going to destroy. Oh, I already started those pumpkins. I already started those pumpkins. So she's going to just sabotage some corn. And then she's going to do apiary or fruit. So it's the apiary. 
She's going to do the topmost wax. All right. So goodbye, wax. There. Okay. Now I have to choose this, the lowest value that's remaining, which is here. So that was shed time. So she's going to go over here. Lowest remaining, which is a two. So I got a plant in two, plant or water in two. Um, oh, she's already sabotaging so much in two. I am going to do a three actually and plant in three. Oh, I have to do one adjacent. Oops, I forgot. So that one's just kidding. This one, I have to plant one adjacent. So I'll plant one adjacent. Okay. And I do the farmer's market. Looking at my goods. I don't have 20 goods yet. Ah, Edith. So one... One perennial and one compost. I will do this. So then I get two, two hyacinths, two good goods, I mean. Then I get a bonus action. Yeah, bonus, bonus action. Then I'm going to do this, get myself an extra point. Okay, bonus action. Yes. We like this game so much. I've laminated the sheet, but I have also laminated a few games of Joe, um, of Beluga Bliss. Yes, yes. I also have these sheets laminated, but the lamination is kind of hard to see on stream. So that's why I'm just using the paper, the paper ones. So, all right, so our Edith is going to sabotage number four. Uh, she can't do anything in four. Uh, so she has to pass and double pass, double pass, because I already have everything else started. Um, she doesn't, she doesn't um, cross off any, high, high, any uh, perennials. So, yeah, that's true. And the glare. That is very true. Okay, so the last drafted die that I took was a two. So now we're going here. I'm not use a water or action. Oh, but first I forgot. First I have to do the farmer's market again. So farmer's market, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. Ah, Edith. Okay, uh, but I get another perennial. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. So then two was the last one, so we'll move over here. May not use water, the water action this round. Okay, that's fine, because it's gonna be raining. It's gonna be raining, everybody. Final round. Ah. Okay, can I do this? Can I do this? Okay. All right, so we got Edith here. Three and some fours. Okay, she chooses first. So she always got to choose from here and go clockwise. So she's going to go on a one. Um, okay, so she's going to sabotage some beans. And then getting a cup of joe. Nice. Philosophy is off to the printers, by the way. Nice. Okay, so then this one is one, so she's going to do compost and goods. Ah, this was the most difficult with her sabotaging all my bonus actions. 
That was not cool. Not, not cool. Uh, Spitzko, what kind of tea are you drinking today? Let us know. I've got some Twinnings. Twinnings black tea. All right. Um, I can't use the water action, so four, plot number four is not super great for me. Hmm. Okay. Well, dang. I have to use some I have to use some of my compost. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see. That's awesome. That's awesome, Wim. A rooibos maple tea, which I just got and I'm disappointed in. Oh, that's too bad. It's a bummer when you don't get some tasty tea. Hmm. Oh, that seems like such a waste if I plant there. Seems like such a waste. And I can't do water this turn. Oh, jeeps. No. Mm. But I do want some, do I want shed time? Shed time, does that help? Shed time does not really help me because I've already got everything shed time. But I'm going to get shed time either way. All right, well, that's really cool, Wim. That's very cool. Okay. I wish I had water. I wish I had the water one. Darn it. Okay. Well, I'm just going to do three and I'm just going to plant here. Cause that's all I can do. I can't plant. I already started these corn. If I had the water action, I could grow them, but I can't. Uh, and then I'm doing apiary or fruit. So I'm going to do down here for my fruit. Three bonus points there. And there we go. Yeah, exactly. Spitzka, exactly. Okay, so now she's going to do four. Four she can't do anything in. However, shed time for the mower. She's going to do... Uh, the string trimmer for four. All right. And then four for myself, but I can't do anything in four. Ah, this is such a bummer. All right. I'm going to do one last compost and plant in five. Oh, <laughs> But then I do shed time, which doesn't give me anything that's going to help. So I'm just going to fill in one. Okay, now we're going to make it rain. So I'm going to make it rain on everything here that I've already planted. And it's a bummer because now my corn crops are tall enough to grow beans, but I don't have any beans to grow. And that gave me two goods here. Okay. I finished these. Gives me three more goods, although I can't take that bonus action because Edith sabotaged that. And 
and then that fill and finish my daffodil. So I can do a daffodil here. And that is all done here and here and here and here. Okay. Oh, and I already did, and this one down here, I forgot. For rain. All right, so now we count up our points. So for the garden plots, For the garden plots, this is how we count up the garden plots. Count all of your bonus points in the, on your ribbons, I believe. Yeah, I think it's all the ribbons. Garden. Yeah, I think that's what you do. Garden crops filled from top to bottom. Okay, here we go. <laughs> hey, if people still are watching Christmas movies now, Dutch, that is still a thing. So, okay, so I've got three here, four here, five, eight. Then nothing here. And... Uh, I've got nothing here. I didn't finish anything here. Four, five, eight, nine, twelve. And then four, five, eight, nine, twelve. And nothing here. Okay, so twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight. 32 for my garden. Perennials, I did not make it to any of the tops of the perennials, boo. Apiary, I just left that for whatever. Fruit, I have three, five, three and five, that's it, five there, but then my shed. Okay, so we've got one point here for the shovel. And then every different type of fruit I was able to harvest. So I got 10, so that's 11, 12, 13 there. So all told 32, 37, 40, I have 50 total. What does it say for solo mode? 50 to 64 says your skills have earned you a blue ribbon. What? I got a blue ribbon, friends. I'm like in mid in the midway point. <laughs> blue ribbon. Yay. Hello, no soul, no props. <laughs> yes, I did soften your razor. Uh, this is the solo mode though. Uh, so the rules are a little bit different for solo. However, they are all included in the actual rule book. So you can play uh, solo or multiplayer. But yeah, I was also incorporating the weather expansion here. Uh, Cordon Bleu. There we go, Tan. I like it. 50 points. I am not, I am not too bad. Uh, not too sad about that, I should say. I am not too bad. No, <laughs> I am not too sad about that. I'm going to pop up here real quick while I get some, uh, get this kind of cleaned up so we can do our crisscross tournament. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't think I was going to do 
like really well, but not terrible. So I will take that as a W for myself. Uh, yeah, but former Edith man, when she was taking all of my bonus actions, that really got me. I was like, oh man, every time was I was like one step behind on getting a bonus action on the goods track. So yeah, but this is a good this is a good one. I can see why I have it in my top five uh, for this year. It's it's nice, it's crunchy. Um, it's not my favorite out of their crunchy strategic ones. I still like Fleet the Dice Game better. Uh, but that's probably because it was one of the first ones that I got introduced to by, uh, you know, Motor City Gameworks and stuff. So I definitely, but I definitely will play this anytime with anyone that wants to play. Uh, so yeah. So three sisters in my top five games of 2022, friends. And now we're going into crisscross. Ben asks, what is number five and number four? Number five, I'll show you. I have them over here, Ben. Why did you ask? Oh, I will show you. And I have some honorable mentions too. So here we go. Number five. Uh, and again, this is not, I, I see, I have these ranked, but they're, they're honestly not ranked for like the purposes of like, these are outweighing other games. I just have them ranked just for the sake of me knowing I'm going to play five games over the next two weeks. So number five was the Isle of Cats, Explore and Draw from the City of Games. Uh, I liked it for the me mechanism of a flip and fill game where you can decide what your goals are and how you can achieve them. Uh, number four was Wicked and Wise from Weird Giraffe Games. It is an interesting take on trick taking where you're actually playing in teams and it can play up to six people. So there we go. And then today, number three was Three Sisters. Uh, I will be playing number two on Friday at 10 a.m. and number one on Saturday afternoon at like noon 30 Pacific time. But I will mention some honorable mentions. The first one is Dandelions. Almost made my top my top five. It is a fun uh, dice placement uh, game. It's super quick. Only two to three players. Takes about 15, 20 minutes to play. And so that's an honorable mention. This is from BoardGameTables.com. Uh, and then Town 66 from Oink Games. It is a nice tile-laying, puzzly game that you can actually play solo, where you're building out a puzzle, uh, a town, based on laying these puzzle tiles out. However, once you lay down a tile, you can no longer place the same color or shape in the row or column that that tile is in. So it's a nice little thinky game. Again, very quick to play. So uh, yeah. Oh, it is all, all play now. Oh, interesting. Thanks, thanks Dutch. I don't know why Mubot's being problematic right now. Just ignore it. Why is Mubot why is Mubot being being weird? That's so weird. I'm sorry, Dutch. I don't know why. Spitzka says, I adore Fleet the Dice game. I agree that one I like that one better. I'm not saying Three Sisters was bad. I really like it. Yes. Um, the blue ribbon was a medal in old France given to people that did something to increase the French renown in the world. And the dish you were talking about was the one reason it was an inventor assigned that honor and why the dish has that name. Fun facts, Tan. Thank you. Fun facts. Fun facts. Just because someone put cheese on meat. <laughs> Noon 30 is a way to say it. Yeah, yeah, I've started to say that um, instead of 1230, because some people are like, is that midnight? Is that noon? So noon 30. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Dutch. I love Board Game Table Company makes board games. So they also did the band traveling country one as well. Uh, on tour. On tour is the one you're thinking of, Spitzka. On tour is that one. So, yeah. Okay, friends, we are getting down to our last game tournament game of 2022 how crazy is that um yeah you're welcome i cannot believe 
We have gone through so many, so many tournament games, and all of you lovely folks, a lot of you have already won bags of swag from me, but this could be your chance for those that have not gotten anything yet to possibly win something. So here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dutch. I am sorry. I have no idea why Moobot was doing what it was doing. Oh, maybe because you were spelling out a website? Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Just ignore it. Just ignore it. Okay, so... <laughs> Spitzka, you already have a bag of swag. That is true. I think we were... We graciously awarded it to you from someone that already won one. So, yeah. So here we go. And I will definitely remind you how to play crisscross. I always tend to do that every time I play this, regardless of whether or not you all have played it with me before, because it's just fun, fun to play, easy, um, easy to do, and yeah, it's just, it's just fun. It is just fun, 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 fun. All right, here we go. Now let's go over here. All right, welcome to the game of crisscross. In this game, ooh, that's a little, that's still a little blurry, huh? Okay, let's see. Let me go back here, real quick. Let me go back here while I'm adjusting that for a second. Hi, giggles. You're just in time for some crisscross. Maybe that's a little bit better. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Bam! Okay, that's that's more clear. More clear! Okay. In this game, friends, the goal of the game is to try to line up as many of the same symbols as you can in rows and columns. And how we're going to do that is I'm going to roll these two dice. There's D6s, so there's six different symbols on the dice. And when I roll them, you're going to write the two symbols next to each other horizontally or vertically, or what we call orthogonally, next to one another in your grid. You've got your five by five grid here. This bottom row and this uh, right column are for scoring purposes, so we're only focusing on the five by five grid in the center. Everyone in the chat is going to have a separate symbol to start with in the upper right hand, upper left hand corner, excuse me. And myself, I'm going to roll the die to have a different symbol in the upper left hand corner. Now, when I roll the two dice, you must write them so they're next to each other. So in an orientation, something like this. This is a valid placement. You can also do something like this. That's also a valid placement. However, you cannot do something like this. That is not valid for this roll, okay? So the two dice that are rolled must be touching each other. They do not have to touch a previously rolled uh, set of dice. However, it will behoove you to make sure you have them lined up because the more symbols that are touching each other, the more points you will receive. Hi, Jenny. My, my calls are too busy for me to play along today. No worry, Jenny. I hope that your calls go well. My friend, thank you for the lurk, and thank you for letting us know you're here. Happy Wednesday to you. So let's say I had my starting symbol was an X. If I have something like this, I would gain two points for the two next to each other, as well as these two points here, so I would gain four points. However, if I had something like this, I would gain four in a row, which is actually eight points. Okay? So, <laughs> too many cats. Too many cats today. Uh, so, that is going to be there. So, for two adjacent to one another is two points. Three adjacent is three points. Four adjacent is eight. And if you get all five of the same symbol in a row or in a column, you will get a total of ten points. However, 
If you have no symbols adjacent to one another that are the same, you will get minus five points. So if I had something like this, do, 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 I would get minus five. Even though there are two X's in this row, they are not next to one another. So I will not get any points for those, okay? So you have to make sure that they are adjacent in the row or in the column. The last thing I will mention is here on this shaded diagonal, you will score twice. So if I have something like this, I would get three points for the three X's plus two points for the triangle. So three plus two is five. And the same thing would go down here. Okay, add up all the totals, minus all your minus points, and your grand total is gonna go here in the bottom right hand corner. The current top score is Amanda Panda with 47 points. Amanda Panda, I don't even know if she's here right now in the chat. If she is, Panda is fighting for her life here on the game. Uh, otherwise, you all have a nice chance to try to outbeat her. Next is Tom Posh. Tom Posh has 41. And uh, I am in third place with 39 points. So there we go. I will say for last thing, this is an Oink Games dice tray. It is, this game is not an Oink game. This is uh, published by Grail Games and designed by Reiner Knizia. So if you decide to pick up a copy for yourself, I'm not sure if it's in print anymore, but if you find it somewhere, look on the Grail Games website or BGG or you know your local game store. Who knows, maybe your local game store will have it there. Highest score is zero, says Dutch. 40s is so high. I know, giggles, but I believe in you. If you believe in me, then I believe in you, okay? Spitzka, your highest score so far was 26, actually. 26. So that was pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Okay, everyone that's playing along in the chat, you will write a triangle in the upper left-hand corner, okay? For me, I will write the single slash. So chat playing along at home, put the triangle. For me, I will do the single slash. All right, Wim is in. Wim, your score to beat is 38, my friend. That was your current score, all right? So here we go. Good luck to everybody. Good luck. Now I've got a single slash and three lines. So it will make sense for me to write the single slash next to my current single slash. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do it like this. And I've got my three lines. Ooh, Wim is making a challenge of 50 points. Let's see if that happens today. So here we go. First roll of the dice is a slash and three lines. Okay, everybody, next roll. We've got three lines in a circle. Okay. Now, I know my three lines, I wanna to touch some other three lines. The circle's not great for me to keep going on that row, so I think I'm gonna go down here. Okay, so there we go. I didn't have to place it there, but because these symbols are already matching, I chose to place them next to one another. So there we go. I will also take some um, some predictions if you all want to predict what I'm going to roll next or some requests. If anyone has any requests to say, hey, I would like I would like some double triangles, Jess. That would be really, really swell. And I will say, okay, let me ask the dice. Can you be rolling double triangles? Cool, I will ask them and whether or not they decide is is not up to me. So yeah, it is not up to me. No, I'm we'll gonna see. take it. We shall see. I am gonna re -roll. take that, re -roll. Wait, are you re-rolling now, Dutch? 
Are you re-rolling this one? Because I already placed it. Do you want me to re-roll this? Or do you want me to, are you just practicing? Nah, the next one. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so currently, so the new roll is three lines and a single slash. However, Dutch, let me know if you wanna use your re-roll. You don't have to turn in the channel points. Just type, yes, please re-roll or no, that is okay. <laughs> Cause that, that channel point redemption did work. Yes, please re-roll. Okay, so everybody on this re-roll, you have to take this re-roll. Otherwise, we're taking it as is. So now we've got a circle and three lines. Sorry, Wim, a circle and three lines. That's the new one. I know, you you have bummed out. Don't blame me, blame Dutch. Don't blame me, blame Dutch. That was better, says Phantom. Okay, so we've got a circle and three lines, everybody. Better indeed, okay. Seems like everybody's working with that one. They are okay with that, Dutch. <laughs> everybody's okay with that one though dutch everybody's okay with that don't blame me the toys are here to play with yeah yeah the channel points the channel points all right this is our new roll we got a circle in three lines okay next here we go a circle and an X. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna do this here. Yeah, so this is this is the final game of uh, our tournament. So I'm going to start in January with a new game. I'm not sure I'm going to crisscross. Someone mentioned Railroad Inc. as a possible tournament game. If anyone, if anyone has a thought on a tournament game that would be really great that people can actually play along with, let me know. Um because that would be fantastic. Yes, the diagonals also score double minus Dutch. That is correct. That is correct. Okay, here we go, next roll. We got three lines and an X. Three lines and an X. Railroad Inc. against Wim? No way. <laughs> well, I think Wim was the one that actually that actually suggested it. Uh, I think. I don't know. Um, that's just that was just an option. That was just an option. It is a challenge. It is a challenge. Hmm, all right, let's go. Double O says Spitzka. Hey! 
Look at that. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Wow. <laughs> you're welcome, Smitska. I don't know if that's uh, actually what you wanted or if you're just saying it. Okay, so I am definitely going to put that here. <laughs> wow. All right, Wim asked for double X's. Double triangles. Oh no. What about just doubles of anything? Doubles of anything should be fine, right? Right, doubles of anything? Okay, let's find out. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Ah, this one popped out. Okay. An X in three lines again. An X in three lines again. Uh, well, you got one of the X's there. Wim, you got an X there. Hmm. All right, so we got three lines and an X here. Now we got requests for double slashes, okay? Okay, here we go. Uh, three lines and a triangle. There's a triangle for everyone playing in the chat. <laughs> I think that's the first triangle I've rolled for y'all today. So in scoring, do you score four points since two doubles or only two? If you have two doubles on the same line, Spitzka, it would score you four, correct. So this here for the two slashes and the two, yes, this row would score me four points. Okay, that is terrible. Ugh, three lines and a triangle. Boo! Someone redeem a reroll. Spitzka's asking for a reroll. <laughs> but you know, if there is a reroll happening, you all have to take the new reroll. Yes, Wim is out of points. Wim is out of points. All right, let's go. No points redemption. So we're going to roll again. Okay, a triangle and a single slash. Well, that's going to go like this. No, thank you. 
Oh, no, Phantom redeeming a reroll, everybody. So the triangle and single slash is going away. Now we've got a triangle and an X is the new one. Everybody's got to take this one. Triangle and an X. Ew, that's worse. <laughs> I'm sorry, blame Phantom. Everybody blame Phantom. Take that back. That is awesome. Okay. Everybody blame Phantom, although it's okay. <laughs> three more rolls, everybody. It's just three more rolls. It's fine. It's everything's going to be fine. Everybody just take a deep breath. We're fine. Get a sip of your beverage. It's all right. Everything's going to be fine. Wim. Come on, Wim. Come on, Wim. What about your 50 points here? Here we go. An X and three lines. X and three lines. Oh, I see an O and an X. Nope, it is an X and three lines. Sorry, Spitzka. An X and three lines here. I'm realizing now my diagonal is going to cause me problems if I don't, if I don't fill in with an O somewhere. Ah, okay. An X and three lines. Yes. Yes, Wim. You are correct. No matches on the diagonal would mean minus 10 points. Yes, yes, yes. Da 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 da. Spitzka, that's a lot of that's a lot of symbols there. That's a lot of symbols. That is a lot of. Can we start over? No. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Wim. I'm sorry. I take it your 50 points is not gonna be happening today, then. I take it. A million points to restart. There you go. All right. We've got uh O and a pound sign. An O and a pound sign. Whoo. I think uh, that's okay for me. <sighs> no, oh, I Giggle's got a reroll. A Giggle's got a reroll. All right. So no, this is we're re-rolling this, friends. Giggles redeemed it. Here we go. She's not going to take it, y'all. She's not going to take it. Double X's. What? Oh, look at that beautifulness. Not the time to intro a new symbol. <laughs> I think everybody can take some double X's. Come on now. I think all of you can take some double X's. It's fine. It's fine, people. Oh, good gravy. But where am I going to put this? Um, oh, that's going to be eight points there if I did that that way. Oh, no. But I need an O. I need an O right here. Okay. I'm just going to do it like this. I'm just going to do it like this. Hope for the best. Uh, hope for the best, everybody. Just a triangle. That's it. Wim just needs one triangle out of two dice. Just one triangle. Oh, and an X. Okay. <laughs> All right. Giggles wants an X or a slash. 
Spitzko on some slashes, three lines, triangles and X's, triangle, X on the last roll, says Phantom. All right, here we go, everybody. You're watching it live. Here we go. We got three lines and a slash. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, Spitzka's okay. Spitzka's okay. Giggles is okay. Please no reroll. <laughs> Wim is in pain. I am in pain. I think Phantom's probably in pain. Oh, goodness. Oh, no. <laughs> it's usable, but it's not great. Oh, Phantom. Can I have buy a half a reroll? <laughs> no. <laughs> a half a reroll would be 5K, not 4K, Wim. I see you trying to manipulate. I see you. <laughs> oh, good gravy. This is terrible. Oh, this is terrible for my last roll. Oh, no. All right, friends. Let's just rip the bandage off. Let's just rip it off. Okay. Add them up. Game is over. No more rerolls. Game is over. You filled in your player sheets. That's it. Let's add them up. Okay, I've got four here, three here, I got ten. Oh, goodness me. Goodness me, everybody. So I got two and two and two and all these minus fives. This is terrible. Ah, and I got minus five on this and minus five down here. Great, great. Great, great, great. Phantom got 27. Phantom, that is actually better than your last roll, my, your last time. 27 is your final score. <laughs> oh, 30 for giggles. Giggles! Oh, my goodness. That is, like, such an improvement from your last game. Congrats, Giggles. That's awesome. Giggles got 30. Wim got 25. All right. Dutch, what did you get? What did you get, Dutch? Let us know in the chat. I'm still calculating. I'm still calculating. I don't, I don't even know. So minus 15 and 6 is minus 9. <laughs> Uh, so 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I got 9 on this last one. Woo! Single digits. Ow. Okay. Dutch got 20. Okay. Would have been 32 if you got in a triangle. Ouch, Phantom. Ouch. A new personal best. Well, there you go. All right, so we're evaluating. Panda, Panda is in the top spot, but Panda's not here. So, top spot, Panda. Second spot is Tom Posh, but Tom Posh is not here. Spitzka got 42. Spitzka, you got it there. GG's, everybody. I think Spitzka took the, took the crown for this game. All right, so oh, Spitzka, good, good, good grief good. indeed. <laughs> oh. Yes, yes, yes. Good griefs all around. Good griefs. All right, so Spitzka, you are the winner of the tournament. Um, and you have already received a bag of swag. So you have the choice. You can gift it to someone else if you would like it, or you can keep it for yourself and I will be sending you similar stuff than what you've already gotten. Maybe a little bit different, maybe a little bit different things for the holiday season, but basically some of the same stuff. So Spitzka, you have the choice. Would you like to pass on the joy to other folks in the chat or would you like to keep it and i will send you um another bag of swag 
Has anyone in chat not gotten a gift? So let's see. I know Phantom. Let's see if anyone has not. That is, I don't know. I want to say everybody that has played has gotten something. Um, Giggles, you've gotten a bag of swag, I believe. Phantom has. Dutch, have you gotten a bag of swag? Wim, have you gotten a bag of swag? You have Chicks Can Game swag. Oh, you don't have Community Connection swag yet, Wim? And you have a CCG t-shirt. Okay. Okay. Dutch has not gotten anything. Okay. So my thought would be if everyone's okay in the chat, we will give to Dutch. We will give Dutch Yoda this bag of swag. Then Spitzka is gifting their gift, their bag of swag to Dutch. Wim is taken care of. Thank you, Wim. Thank you, everybody, for your honesty. Dutch, congratulations. You have gotten a bag of swag from me and the CCG crew. Da -da 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 -da. Yay! Thank you, everybody, for your honesty. I do appreciate that because I want to share the wealth. I want to spread the joy that is CCG to everybody. So, uh, Dutch, I will DM you and get all your mailing information. But yes, this concludes the crisscross tournament. And let me know, friends, if you have any other thoughts on other games that you would like to play for tournament. Um, that would be good for, like, player participation on a once a week. Pay I am happy to pay it forward from what Lady Taka did for me. Yes! So kind. Thank you, Spitzka. I really, really appreciate it. Um, because I know everybody, everybody likes getting stuff. And it's really cool when you can share that cool stuff with other folks as well. So thank you, Spitzka. Truly, truly, truly thank you. Uh, Welcome to is a long game. Yes, that is that is true. Uh, floor plan, Patrick Doodle. Ooh, those are good ones. Oh, that's good. Those are good, too. I like doodling things. I like doodling things. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll do some, maybe we'll do some doodle, Wim. Maybe we'll do some patchwork doodle. Because really, all people need is, uh, paper. Paper and pen. Second chance. We've already done second chance. Uh, maybe test them out. That's a good idea, too. I like that, Switzka. We'll test some stuff out. We have already done Second Chance, so um, Patchwork Doodle is similar to Second Chance, I would say. Uh, we could, I don't know. Uh, let me know. Let me know in chat or send me a DM. You know how to find me at Jess underscore CCG. You know how to get a hold of me. Uh, let me know, friends, what you want to do. A Beluga Bliss game, that would be perfect. That would be perfect. Delicious, also another good choice. Also another good choice. So yeah, I have some I have some thinking to do now as far as the next one. Uh, party planner. Um, I don't know about that one. That game seems kind of hard. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Dutch. That's actually Dutch's game. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, all right, friends, I'm going to send you off on a raid train to the wonderful Jen Cam plays board games. She's currently, I think she's going to be playing some Cascadia. Um, so that's going to be really fun. Let's see. Jen Cam. Oh, I forgot plays. Raid. Jen Cam plays board games. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. So yes, uh, tune in for the raid. Give Jen all the love and all the emotes and everything. Uh, if you are a subscriber to my channel, send in the lovely CCG raid emotes made by Quaid. If not, feel free to just use those uh, fun little emotes that you have from whoever's raiding. Um, oh, thank you, Spitzka. I do see your whisper. Thank you, thank you. And Wim, until next time, that is very true. 
Uh, stay safe, everybody. Enjoy your board games. Be kind to one another. And until next time, I'll see you on the next one. Bye, everyone.